Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 35 of the In From Japan podcast, the podcast where we talk about the latest news on Japan-developed games and other things in relation to them, available on Spotify, Podbean, and YouTube. Uh, as al- always, I'm your host, Arrow Moss, and with me is my co-host, the Phenomenon from Suriname, Jason hey, Corder. Hey. And as always, we're going to start with the games we've been playing. So I've still been on the Final Fantasy XIV grind. I'm not gonna lie; I'm getting a little burnt out by the post heaven or by the Heaven Sword post game. But I'm almost done. I'm almost to Stormblood. Uh, almost there. Like what? The story is getting interesting, but sometimes cutscenes are just really slow when they're talking. Like, <laughs> what is it about the game that makes you feel burned out? Probably just the repetitive stuff. Just the fact that you have to do so many quests to get to the next, like, big mm-hmm. section. It's just like, all right, so there's, like, okay, so they're talking to these guys, and then you, you talk to these other guys, and then sometimes you do, like, a solo instance, and then other times you do a, uh, like, a, a dungeon every once in a while, a dungeon or a boss, mm-hmm. and that's nice, but, like... It's just like, at some point, it's just like, when does it end? Like, why didn't they streamline this a little better? Well, they um, streamlined ARR, but not, not the rest. Yeah, so maybe maybe later. But <laughs> it's just, and I think it probably doesn't help that I have a friend who kept kept saying, like, oh, yeah, you're almost there, you're almost there, you're almost there. Because there are 44 quests mm. in post heaven sword and i have about like around 12 left i mean the thing about mmos is it's it's not meant to be a speed run you have to take your time with it yeah no the problem is i'm trying to catch up with my friends because they're ahead of me if that's the case you can just buy skips right i could but i just don't want to spend money on that (laughs) and then um it's just that like it's like this one friend, it's like the only game he plays right now, and I'm like, dude, I, I have other games I need to play. I can't be playing Final Fantasy XIV only, exclusively. I mean, if, I'm not a good, a good enough player to make that much content out of, out if, of that. If, that, if that's the case, <laughs> why not put it on the back burner and play something else? It, it it'll still be there when you. Uh, well, when it's you... more because one of the friends we one of the friends we play with is probably not going to be on because he's going to be going back huh. to school. So, like, we're trying to play together uh-huh. when we can. Um, but, yeah, like, I still like it. I'm just getting a little burnt out just specifically with this post-game part. <laughs> Once it goes to Stormblood and opens up the new area, I think it'll, like, be a little better. Because right. um, I'll have, like, new places to explore, new things to do, yeah. all that. Um I also, last night, I just randomly tried Ninjala because we talked about, like, the Season 2 stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. You can skateboard in Ninjala now. That's neat. There's a skateboard weapon, and you can just skateboard around, like, on the side of buildings and all around. Is is that connected or related to the Sonic content that's supposed to be on its way? I don't Mm -hmm. think so. Uh, but I guess they could turn they could turn one of the skateboards or surfboards into the uh, what's it called? The Sonic Riders uh, skateboards. The, the like the oh I was gonna say that I was gonna say like the plane the part of the plane from Sonic uh, Adventure Two. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, that, I guess that works. Um, yeah, I could see there being some kind of tie-in with that. But remember, like cosmetics are still weirdly consumable. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, th- th- yeah, I don't know if they're ever gonna uh, change that. Okay, how how about the the enjoyment of Ninjala? Are you still having fun, or is it? Oh yeah, it's still I still fun. I like I I I was playing it pretty late, so I didn't play mm-hmm. that long. I played a couple games, um, and I was like, and I was using an mm-hmm. old weapon because I accidentally messed up something mm-hmm. in the menu where I didn't have didn't equip the new weapon, and I saw how like. Somebody was like teleporting around me, like all over the place with the skateboard, and it's more just because they knew how to use it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I had I'm a little rusty. Yeah. Um. And so after after a couple games, which I still got placed decently in, um, I just went to the like training just to test out all the new weapons. Um. And so that was really fun. It, it reminds me. Have you ever played a, a Spyro Year of the Dragon? Uh, probably, but way way back. 
So like, so like, there's a section in, in Spyro: You're the Dragon where you're just skateboarding. Oh yeah. And like hitting uh, hitting lizards off of balloons and stuff. Like sometimes I would just like go and just skateboard in that area for fun, just for no reason. It's like that's what Ninjala be, being on a skateboard in Ninjala feels like to me. Oh, okay. At least in the practice mode, I haven't applied it to the actual like kind of floaty. You know, the actual game yet. Kind of floaty and not yeah, like kind of floaty, but not in like a bad way. Like like it's still like fun enough. Fun. Okay. Yeah. Do you think you're you're it's gonna stick with fluid. Ninjala then, or is it something you? Dip I mean, in and I can out, barely uh, connect time to time the time. internet with my. Hmm. I can barely connect to the internet with my with my switch. So uh, that was just kind of a oh my switch is connecting right now. Let's see hmm. if this works. And then and then I played it for like an hour or two, and <laughs> okay. I was like oh. <laughs> All right, but yeah, once I once I figure out some stuff, I I do want to play it a bit okay. more. I'll uh, keep us posted then, because Ninjala is still popular, but not maybe in the mainstream. More like for for oh, people in the and know. also and also the Jala, mm-hmm. like the only way to get Jala is to oh, buy okay. it. So. Or at least the easiest way, and that's the annoying thing. I mean, thing. it is a free-to-play game, and they have to make money somehow. No, but like, I'd rather. I I think there are ways to get Jala without money, but money is like the 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 mo- the easiest, like most accessible yeah, way that's, to. Yeah, that's that's definitely. Get it. Like, I wish it was a little more like Apex or like something that where like, oh no, the gameplay will get you Jala. Uh, it's, you know, it's definitely a free-to-play model. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But otherwise, yeah, it's fun. Like, you don't need yeah. Jala. But, uh, yeah. Uh, what have you been playing? Um, I have been playing Atelier Ryza and Sakura Wars. Um, not that much because my day job is still uh, kind of time-consuming. And we have a soft lockdown uh, in place, so it's... Yeah, it's it's not the best time to to. Uh, oh, poor you! <laughs> I'm not. I'm no, not I'm just going. Kidding. Woe is me! I'm just <laughs> just living in the. I'm just saying. Um, so yeah, I've played those two games. Just be glad you don't live here. I tell you, Ryza is is still charming, um, still easy going. But the thing I miss most is the urgency in the plot, because nothing is really driving me forward except the the. The, the question of okay what's gonna be around the next corner but it's not like okay um, something has to happen by this deadline or uh, there's this hmm. thing that needs to be done or this other thing won't happen so there's no urgency in the plot it's it's kind of like yeah. the animal crossing of RPGs it, it's it's pretty huh. uh Stop getting it's me interested. It's pretty easy going. Um, it still looks gorgeous. Uh, I'm still not the biggest fan of how the characters animate in the open world or just semi-open world because you still have to. Mm. Uh, how do I say this? It's it's segmented. Like it's it's when when you ah. hit a border of an area, you have to press A and then you move on to the next area, which is kind of strange in this generation to me. Like with Breath of the Wild and and The Witcher and other RPGs where you kind of traverse uh, automatically. This is such a weird throwback. Um, Not that it hinders the enjoyment all that much, but it's still an odd thing. Uh, I have to give a special shout out to the visuals though, because it has this very soft Mm. uh, watercolor-esque anime feel to it um it's 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 Mm. very very pleasing to the eye Uh, some of the the character designs are pretty fan servicey uh if if you know you know um (laughs) and considering they did fairy tale next you might say okay that's a good fit considering the fan service in fairy tale yeah that makes sense yeah um (laughs) and i've also been playing sakura wars just the beginning and I haven't seen combat yet because uh, time is a very, very precious commodity now. 
Uh, so I've I've did the opening. I've mm. I've done some exploring and talking to the characters, and I am just so smitten with the game. It's so it's so lovingly created, from the presentation to the characters. It's I think it. Who was it? I watched a YouTube video not too long ago about Sakura Wars, and what they said really rings true. That Sakura Wars feels like you're playing an anime episode. From the way the, the 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 story is paced, how the characters interact with each other is very cool, and you have a conversation system where um, it's kind of the progenitor to the Mass Effect um, dialogue tree, where you have like three or four options, and it's it's also time limited, so uh, you have to be pretty quick on your feet with with regards to your responses and how you respond has an effect on how the the other characters react to you like you may say something that that might sound good to you but they will react according to their personality like one person might be pretty open one person might be more guarded and easy or easygoing and that reflects in how they respond to you and that's pretty cool um and it's just such a beautiful game to look at and having these two games put next to each other like atelier rise and sakura wars makes me really wonder okay like why couldn't the fairy tale game look like this like the the uh, I, I mean, mm-hmm. maybe they had to. Maybe they felt they had to rush it out or something. Uh, because remember, fairy tale had already ended. Yeah, maybe. I, I don't know. Or yeah, maybe having the the next generation looming over the horizon made made them think like, okay, uh, we got to get this out now. But yeah, it it's kind of a bummer. But that too, yeah. because the thing about fairy tale is is it's in the it's in the middle of the anime, like weirdly. Yeah. So it seems well, like I'm it's like t- kind of like a either a test thing for mm-hmm. like the next one, for or a f- like a or like they did it that way because the games before went up to that point. Yeah, I think it's the latter because I was on the wiki and they said that um, uh, like the the the. The, the tournament arc well it's it's kind of a one large tournament arc the whole whole manga uh where the fairy tale members have to grand magic games no not it's before the grand magic games it's where they fight against uh hades um that oh, part was uh, already Tenru adapted Island. by another game so that's why it starts uh-huh. at that point and up to like a few story arcs later so it's it's not that they didn't care about what came before it's just okay th- this already exists in a game form I don't think we should redo that 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 was maybe their reasoning for starting where they started uh, but yeah it's it's kind of a bummer because it's it's probably nitpicky of me but yeah I I, I wish it looked a bit better and uh, having that said I also have another game I want to talk about is Takeshi and Hiroshi it was announced during the Indie World Direct last week, I think. And it's a smaller scale game. I, I don't know. It, it costs like eight bucks, I think. So it's probably going to be two hours or something. Um, but it, it looks nice and promising. I haven't played it yet, but I really want to dip into it. But yeah, that's all I've been... You haven't no. played it? You haven't played a game on the what we've been playing no, I just section? I just want to make a quick mention of it <laughs> and say, like, okay, next week I'll have my impressions. Yeah, so look out for that. I Also, I know I said I'd have Captain Tsubasa. Oh, so I played a little bit of it, and uh, of the Captain yeah. Tsubasa game. And uh, then I remembered I'm terrible at sports games. So I could not get past the first level. So I need to practice a lot more. Wait. <laughs> Have you never seen a soccer match, or do you not know? No, how it's, it's, plays? it's the way the buttons are. It's the way the buttons are. Like it's all it's sports games specifically mm-hmm. for some reason. Okay. Like I used to play N- NBA 2K11. This is a funny story, and I was like so bad at it that like I my roommate because this was in college, mm-hmm. right? So like I'd be playing it, and 
like my roommate would walk in back from class, and right as I did that, it would be me like shooting uh, with Michael Jordan, and the the announcer would be like Jordan with another miss, and my roommate would be like, "Yeah, that's not something you hear normally." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, I think I just need to get used to it. Like, I'm really into the story, like the story, and the. I don't know where it starts because I I've seen some of the anime, but I don't know if I got to as far as where the game is. Um, you might um, want to look up a, a wiki. Because the game starts or... a little later than where I stopped. Yeah. Yeah. There's also a, a great review by Switch Up on YouTube, and they also mention mm. where in the in the show or the manga this this takes place. So uh, give that a look see. Uh. Oh, like, I, I was also going to mention, I think I'm going to also be playing Fairy Tale soon-ish, but on the Switch, because I've seen a review or a few reviews that mentioned that the performance isn't all that great. and It's know. not. I froze twice Wait, yesterday. you have it on the Switch and not on PS4? No, I have on PS4. No, I have it oh. on PS4. Because I thought it would perform okay. better. But I f- and it was fine until I froze two or three times. Well, yesterday. if you're having performance issues, I don't want to see you on Switch. Well, those were the only problem. Otherwise, it's been perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, but the, so that's that was what I've been playing. Th- yeah. Who knows what that was? Um. All right. So next we got the In From Japan J-List, where we talk about recent video game related and entertainment news. And we just have one quick piece of uh, news for that this week. Tales of Crestoria 15 minute animation, The Wake of Sin, to premiere October 18th. Depicts the prologue of the main story. This is by Sao Romano for Gamatsu. Bandai Namco will release a 15 minute Tales of Crestoria animation produced by Kamikaze... Or, no... Kamikse, I think that's supposed to say Kamikaze, <laughs> Doga on October 18th at 6 a.m. Pacific Time, 9 a.m. Eastern, the company announced. Not US, not UFO Table, huh? Mm. That's interesting. Um, I think it's UFO Table. The animation titled The Wake of Sin... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the animation titled The Wake of Sin depicts the prologue of the main story of Tales of Crestoria, which shows... Kanata and Misella setting off on their journey. According to Bandai Namco, it is chock full of thrilling battle scenes and top quality acting. If you've already played Tales of Crestoria, you can enjoy beautiful images of the game's world, Bandai Namco said. And if you still haven't played yet but are curious about the game, I hope you'll be able to get a feel for the world by watching this video. I gotta get back to it at some point. Uh, well, I have a brand new phone, so I might try it on that. Hopefully it, it won't stutter and, and, and spurt mm. as my old phone uh, did. Yeah, let's hope not. <laughs> uh, so next we have the uh, rec- recommended content. And content other than news from the past week listed out. Links in the description. So we have... The Story of Moon, the anti-RPG that inspired Undertale by Nadia Oxford over at US Gamer... A Game Without Killing, The Story of Moon's 22-Year ju- Journey to Leave Japan by Patrick Klepek over at Vice. Preview, Scarlet Nexus Could Look at How Connections Changed the World by Jenny Lotta for Silicon Era. Common Rider, Memory of Heroes, Common Rider Zero One Gameplay by Sao Romano, Gamatsu via YouTube. Moon is No Longer Lost to Time, I Hope More Games Join It by Katie McCarthy over at US Gamer. Super Bomberman R Online Interview. Blowing Up on a New Platform by Jenny Lana for Silicon Era. That's a good Captain headline. Captain Tsubasa, Rise of New Champions is Smashing Streamlined Soccer by Graham Russell, Silicon Era. Um, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles was astoundingly screwed up twice by Nadia Oxford over at US Gamer. <laughs> Dragon Quest Builders 2 can help make playing Dragon Quest 2 feel more worthwhile by Jenny Lana for Michi Biku. And... The last recommended content is actually a book that I actually just got in the mail the other day, and I've been reading it a little bit, but I'm, I need to see which things have spoilers or not. Um, the mm-hmm. Psychology of Final Fantasy, Surpassing the Limit Break by Anthony M. Bean. Uh, and, like, so, uh, fun fact, I have a psychology degree. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so whenever p- people put, like, you know, nerdy stuff and psychology together, mm-hmm. I'm interested 
And this book had like a link to a whole site about like what they call geek psychology as like as like an entire field even. I'm like, oh my god, I wish I had this when I was in college. <laughs> I mean, uh, um, yeah, go ahead. Um, but yeah, no, the book so far, like I've only read the introduction and like half of the first uh, essay because it's a collection of different essays, right? Yeah. And the first one is on story structure. Oh. Um, but it, it's been pretty good so far. Okay. I, if you're a Final Fantasy fan, I definitely and a psychology fan, then I definitely yeah, recommend it. I might just get it. Um, also, uh, somebody, uh, Natalie Flores, one of uh, I don't think she follows this podcast, but somebody who is just around our same network of people. Um, she wrote the foreword for yeah, this book. She does. She's a very big Final Fantasy fourteen she does, fan. She works for yeah, fan. She bite. does great work over there, and she has great takes on Twitter. So uh, give her a follow. Most of the time. Hmm. <laughs> there are things I disagree with pertaining to certain Final Fantasy games. I mean, it's, it's just an <laughs> anyway. opinion. So. Yeah, is this is this the, the way? <laughs> is this how much she dislikes certain ones? I'm just like, why so much? Um, but um, okay. So ne- uh, moving on, it's time for the news mm-hmm. rundown. We once again have no bad news regarding video game stuff. Three weeks in a row. Surprisingly. Yeah. Three. Oh wow. Yeah. Nature <laughs> is healing. <laughs> Nature is healing. <laughs> um. So, our first in other news story is you can send love letters to Monokuma in Danganronpa to spare a love letter, and this isn't loading. That's a bad sign. Hmm. Hang on. Yeah? Can you pull it up? Because it's not loading for me. Uh-oh. Uh, sure. Um, let's see, let's see. <laughs> Send love letters to Monokuma in Danganronpa. Despair love letter. This is by Kazuma Hashimoto for Silicon Era. If you've ever wanted to send Monokuma a love letter, here is your chance. Danganronpa Despair love letter is a new take on the classic board game Love Letters. Unlike the version that board game enthusiasts might be familiar with, the Spirit Love Letter will implement a hope and despair card feature. The Danganronpa Despair Love Letter board game will cost 2,500 yen or roughly $25 US and is planned to release sometime in September 2020. Um, yeah, so uh, click on the article if you want to see a uh, a trailer uh, pertaining to the board game and some extra information about the Danganronpa series. But yeah, this is kind of cool. Okay. Yeah, I just bought uh, I just bought V3 because it was on sale on um, PSN before I uh, before it gets uh, taken off temporarily or re-licensed or whatever. Wait, wasn't it re? Um Re, uh, re, 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 upload, republish, yeah, republish, but uh. no, I don't think it was yet. Huh. Okay. Huh. Oh well. It, it, it yeah, it's not gonna disappear, but um, I think no. Wait, isn't it that the Vita version is gonna be delisted for good? I wouldn't be surprised. Oh uh, well. I mean, we'll check. We'll check back on that and uh, have a definitive answer later or next week. <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. Next, next up- new story. Yeah. I got this. I got this. Uh, fatal, fatalis, fatalis. I think it's fatalis. Will be the final monster added to Monster Hunter World Iceborne. This is by Kazuma Hajimoto for Silicon Era. The Elder Dragon Fatalis will be the final monster added to Monster Hunter World Iceborne through the free title updates. 
After a year of continual updates and free content, this is the end of the road for Iceborne. However, this final free title update will come with new content, Fatalis, and a new event. This update adding Fatalis is expected to hit on October 1st, 2020. The news was delivered through the Developer Diary Final, which had suggested that this would be the last Developer Diary for Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Speculation about Fatalis is included, inclusion <laughs> had since circulated, and these speculations have proven correct. Players will be able to take on Fatalis for new armor, weapons, and even a special costume. In addition to this, a new Halloween-themed event will take place during the month of October. Players will be able to get new themed armor sets in addition to layered armor and a new costume for their poogie, which is the pig you get mm -hmm. in Monster Hunter. The Autumn Harvest Fright Fest is planned to take place from October 16th to November 5th, 2020. Um, yeah, one of my favorite uh, Monster Hunter armors is the Harvest Armor, which you have like it's very kind of hobgoblin from Spider-Man esque, mm. but you have like a jack-o'-lantern oh, face. That's cool. Oh wait, wait yeah, you have a jack-o'-lantern um, villain in Spider-Man. Oh well, you're more well versed in comics than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check that real quick. Uh, go ahead, keep keep reading. Uh, no, that was that was it. <laughs> yeah, Jack o' Lantern <laughs> um, is a real oh, well, character. There's one more Monster Hunter. Okay, well, I guess he looks kind of like him. The armor looks kind of like him. Then maybe I don't know. Um, so uh, next Monster Hunter story: Monster Hunter Switch new entry is reportedly coming mm. soon. This is by Iane Agasa for Dual Shockers. A new Monster Hunter Switch game is coming, according to Dusk Golem, who mentioned Resident Evil Village before its announcement by Capcom. We might be soon witnessing a brand new entry of Capcom's Monster Hunter series on Nintendo Switch. Dusk Golem, known for leaking some true information about Resident Evil Village before its official announcement, mentioned so on Twitter. Dusk Golem added that this new Monster Hunter game on Switch will be using a version of the RE engine compatible with Nintendo's platform. Yeah. A new Monster Hunter on Switch would likely to feature the same overhauled systems as Monster Hunter World. This entry made the series reach worldwide success by being less rigid and easier to get into. I don't necessarily agree with that while saying hard to master. I do agree with that. <laughs> the only Monster Hunter game available on Nintendo Switch right now is Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate, known in Japan as Monster Hunter Double Cross. It's an HD version of the Nintendo 3DS game of the same name. While Capcom initially started Monster Hunter 2004... Oh, that's just a stuff about uh, Monster Hunter on portable consoles. Um... Yeah, so I'm excited for that. Hopefully, we get an announcement about yeah. it soon. I mean, you I might mean, not I figure we will. You might not agree with it, but uh, the sales and the success story of Monster Hunter World speaks for itself. I think. Well, outside of Japan, yeah. at least. And I uh, listened to Kind of Funny Games Daily this week, and Imran, I think, was it Imran? Probably made a good point or yeah, had, some, yeah. had some inside information on why Monster Hunter World or Resident Evil 7 didn't come to Switch is because the engine isn't uh, is, isn't a good fit for the Switch like uh, it, it wasn't yeah. running well uh, the games I mean so they're probably going mm -hmm. to make something smaller scale and I think I saw this reference on Twitter that they're probably going to harken back to the Monster Hunter Freedom days where uh, Monster Hunter was pretty popular on the PSP and mm -hmm. have it be more like ad hoc multiplayer uh, like have a couple of friends over and, and play locally kind of like that or not locally but within this I mean I'm sure it will still have yeah, online like, yeah. ha like have your friend next to you with their Switch and playing um, cooperatively Ho hopefully it's not as it's not as weird as Monster Hunter Worlds Online. Just because to play with friends, you have to do this weird thing, and it's not as easy as it used to be. And so, hopefully, they fix that All or right. like go back how it was before. Okay. Uh, next up, we have East Nine PS4 version will launch in February 2021. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. Adol's East 9 Monstrum Nox Adventures will continue globally next year. The East 9 PS4 version has been dated worldwide. 
people will see it first in North America on February 2nd, 2021. That's a day after my birthday. A few days later, it will appear in Europe on February 5th, 2021. Then on February 12th, 2021, you'll see it in places like Australia. However, you've probably caught that all those dates do only apply to one version. The Nintendo Switch and PC releases will s- will fall sometime behind. NIS America doesn't have exact dates for either one just yet. However, they will also show up in 2021. Folks will just have to wait until the summer to try them. So yeah, um, East 9 coming soon. So uh, yeah, that's sooner than I, well, I guess that's not sooner than I expect because it's not in Japan yet, right? It's worldwide uh, launch. Let me see. East 9. I'll look it up real quick. I don't think it's out of Japan yet. Um, release date for Japan is... September 26, 2019. Oh, it already released in Japan. Oh, what the heck? Yeah, it's, it, it's, I didn't even it's realize It's the that. English version that's coming soon-ish. Okay, I just probably just haven't really paid attention to it for a while. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so that's good. We got to start off the year with some good oh, games. Oh, and if you're interested in East uh, still, well, uh, East hopefully. 8 is on sale for about 30 bucks on Humble Bundle. So uh, you might want to snag that. I also, I believe, I also believe East Origin got a release date on Switch, but I forgot what the day was. Isn't it already out? East Origin. Uh, Let me check real quick. Mm, okay, it's already out, but on Switch, it's October 1st. So it's not out yet. Yeah. No, but it's, it, it's got a release yeah, no, date. No, no. Uh, okay, next story. Nino Kuni Cross World's official website open. The massively multiplayer online RPG for mobile. This is, uh, once again by Sal Romano over at Gamatsu. Level 5 and Netmarble have opened the official website for Nino Kuni Cross World. It's massively multiplayer online RPG due for iOS and Android in 2020 in Japan. Here's an overview of the game's story via the official website. You are a beta tester for the virtual reality game Soul Divers. As you progress through the day- game, you start to notice that the game's world is real. After, oh, I've heard this before. <laughs> After meeting a mysterious woman named Rania, you learn your mission. To carry out your mission, you must confront powerful enemies and rebuild the kingdom. Is it possible to save the connected two worlds from ruin? It. it <coughs> oh, if this game comes out in English, it I'll try kind it. Of, kind of sounds like Dragon Quest Your Story. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there's a little trailer on Gamatsu. Um, but yeah, it's basically like, well, I'll I'll try it if it comes out in English. That's about uh, it. Because I like both Nino Kuni games enough. Well, the first one more than the second. Yeah, I have them both. They're both but decent. I haven't. Yeah, they're both they're both. I mean, good. I, I, it's just I prefer I've the first one. I played the first one a little bit, uh, and I played the demo of the second one. But I own own them both now on Steam, so I I might might have some research to do before this comes out okay. next yeah. up all right we, next story oh yeah you got yeah. a couple stories <laughs> auden chronicle 100 heroes kickstarter campaign closes at 4.57 million funded companion game announced this is by sal romano for gamatsu the Kickstarter campaign for Suikoden series spiritual successor Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes has closed at okay I'm not no, I'll just do it 4.571.4. Nah, that whatever 4.5 million just just take that um, and that's 895 percent of its initial 510 thousand dollars funding goal. Over the course of its 33-day campaign, the following stretch goals for additional in-game content were achieved. Like, um, there are mini games, new characters, new game plus, etc., etc. And as explained in a new blog post, the final stretch goal: a quiet place, 
is for a town creation RPG companion game developed by Japanese studio Natsume Atari, which is known for games like the Ninja Saviors and Wild Guns, not to be confused with the United States based Natsume, which owns the Harvest Moon property. The game would release before Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes and feature a variety of different lifestyle mini games that allow players to gather a variety of different materials to build up their town, farm, and house. These materials would then be transferable to the main game when it launches to provide a head start in crafting items, armor, and more. Some of the characters that appear in the main game are planned to appear in the companion game, and there may also be some kind of battle mechanic. Um, yeah, so this is pretty cool. I'm super stoked for this game to come out. Um, like, I'm at least willing to try it. I'm, I mean, I've never it. been a Suikoden fan or anything, but I'll try it. Like, once I saw a oh, <laughs> spiritual successor of Suikoden, oh, I can back it. Oh, yes, please. It, it's about to go down. <laughs> and it's a, this is the first game I've backed. Um, and I just love Suikoden so much, and I'm so happy that uh, the the developers, the creators, are giving are getting an, another shot at something. Yeah, that that might surpass this or surpass Suikoden. So I'm happy. I'm very happy, and the mm-hmm. developers are also happy. But Natsume Atari is interesting because I. Uh, let me see. Because it's not the same as the other Natsume, <laughs> which they were quick to point out. Yeah. No, it's confusing. Yeah. Um, it's like how there's there's two avalanches. Yeah. Wait. Uh, like, are, are they the good, quote-unquote, Natsume, or the bad, quote-unquote, Natsume? That's what I'm trying to figure out now. Oh, they're the good one. They make the Rune Factory games. I think. Hey, where's Rune Factory 4? Rune Factory Yeah, because the bad ones are the ones that make Harvest Moon, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Or that currently make Harvest Moon. Because the story of Seasons is by a different thing. Yeah, there's, all, there's all that. Um, Alright. Yeah, so that's, that's cool. Uh... Do we move on to the yeah. next story? Uh, let me catch up real quick. Next story is Sony Interactive Entertainment to continue to invest in or acquire companies, explore expanding first party titles to PC. This is by Sal Romano for Gamatsu. Sony Interactive Entertainment will continue to invest in or acquire firms with abundant creativity and cutting edge technologies to build up worldwide studios as well as explore expanding our first party titles to a pc platform according to the sony corporation's newly published 2020 corporate report um, if you click on an article you'll find some notable uh, segments from the report but basically this boils down to sony it's probably going to be adding more studios to their or under their umbrella and they're also looking, supporting uh, some of their first-party titles to the PC platform. So, uh, yeah, more good news inside. Uh, unless you're someone who's a diehard PlayStation fan who won't who won't see any PC games. I'll never understand <laughs> that. I'll never understand that. How dare more people be able to play I mean, these how, games? They should remain exclusive to a platform they don't have. How dare you ask me to share my joy? I just uh, yeah, and also like gamers you know, PC. You get so no, much. Don't, don't like, I'm not Stay a I'm down. not a PC gamer. Uh huh. <laughs> I'm not a PC gamer, but like when when titles like get ported to PC, you get to explore them so much more on a technological yeah. level, like with mods and everything, and just looking into the files and everything. Well, besides um, that, it, it gives you a, a greater sense of control over what you can see or how much you yeah. can see of the world but that's also dependent on how much you're willing to invest in your hardware mm-hmm. uh, that's true and, and PC yeah, gaming because gaming be expensive yeah like PC gaming might be the best way to experience the graphics but it's also the most expensive place to experience the graphics so it 
Oh, yeah. I don't know if I should have added that into mm-hmm. the news. The NVIDIA ones? The NVIDIA nah, stuff. Not, yeah, really, not, really, stuff. not really. It, 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 it's not... Well, there are new graphics cards, and they look really yeah. good. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> That's the news no, but for that. What's worth mentioning is the, the lowest tier so far announced, the 3070, is twice or at least twice as powerful, or in theory or on paper, as powerful as the 2080, the current champion of the NVIDIA graphics cards. So for about the same money you'd be probably investing or in a ps5 or an xbox series x you'll get so much more performance but that's also dependent on so much other hardware pieces and uh bottom line that's a lot more money so maybe not the best uh best uh bang for your buck okay next up we have final fantasy 16 speculation rises with potential official twitter accounts this is by ryan meitzler for dual shockers with final fantasy 15 nearing its fourth anniversary and final fantasy 7 remake having released this past spring naturally fans of the long-running jrpg franchise are wondering when we'll see the next mainline installment make its way to release presumably titled final fantasy 16 Rumor, oh, come on, what else is go- what else is it going to be called? Rumors surrounding the next main entry in the series have been, have been running for some time, and the latest speculation has arrived from what might or might not be the game's Twitter accounts. Users on social media have uncovered what might be placeholder Twitter accounts for the next mainline Final Fantasy titles, finding both at FF16 underscore JP and at FF16 underscore EN for English. That would presumably be both Final Fantasy 16's English and Japanese official Twitter accounts. Currently, both accounts are currently locked, unless two currently, and unable to be followed, and were seemingly created earlier this month. Specifically, it was also discovered that the emails tied to the accounts might be connected to official Square Enix email addresses. Um... Dun, dun, dun. Click on the article if you want to see more um, about this, but it might be, it might also not be. It could just be someone doing an elaborate prank, because that's not unheard of. That's true. Um, that's very true. I, I'm also thinking that Final Fantasy 16 is, is a ways off, because Square Enix is also already jam-packed with developing a whole slate of games, and they're focusing on... 14 and the 7 well, remake 14 stuff. is its own uh, and... production studio uh, that's that's dedicated oh, okay. to 14 itself but, well the 7 remake yeah, and, stuff and 7 and... remake was considered a mainline entry by Square Enix so it, it stands mm-hmm, to reason yeah. that uh, the second part of that 7 remake part 2 would also be considered like uh, a mainline focused entry um People are still speculating that, like, maybe Project Athea uh, or Athea or however it's you pronounce possible. it is secretly Final Fantasy 16, which is possible. Yeah, Final Fantasy first is 13 turned into Final Fantasy uh, 15, and other games in the Square Enix table got renamed to something else because they just quit, or it made sense. But I don't think this is likely. Um, they have their hands full, and there was some speculation that Naoki Yoshida from Final Fantasy XIV, the executive producer, uh, was set to be helming Final Fantasy XVI because there's some artwork floating around. So it's an MMO? Uh, no, no, it's an MMO. <laughs> they, they already <laughs> mentioned that the next Final Fantasy MMO is not going to be uh, showing up for a long time. Uh, but Yoshida is super busy with Final Fantasy XIV, so I don't think he has time enough to devote to a mainline Final Fantasy game. But who knows? Because it's it's all speculation at this point. There's there's no hard evidence suggesting A or B. So yeah. Next up is all you. Yeah. So. Next up, uh, Taito sets Guinness World Record for most claw crane game machines at a single venue. Uh, this is by Sato for Silicon Era. Taito is now the proud Guinness World Record holder for the most claw crane game machines at a single ve- v- 
venue, Taito Corporation, set the record on August 29, 2020, when it opened the Taito Station Fuchu Kururu Shop. The venue operates a whopping total of 454 claw crane machines. Uh, the above is a look at the grand opening of the record holding, holding Taito Station. The guy receiving the official Guinness World Record is the store manager. Fuchu Mayor Norio Takano and Taito President Tetsu Yamato, Yamada also appeared for the Guinness World Record ribbon cutting ceremony. As for the Taito Station shop, it was previously a toy store that sold large toys. The floor space is over 1800 meters. So that's more than enough to jam the entire place full of crane games. There are countless machines with just about anything that you can imagine getting from a claw crane game, including keychains, food, character goods, and more. The above image shows instant yakisoba prizes. That's great. <laughs> the, pla- the place is basically world class when it comes to prize variety. The areas are numbered for all the different sections. There's something for everyone, and the price range varies quite a bit as well. Above, the machine lets you grab sweets for 10 yen a play. The shop boasts being the world's top venue for claw crane games, so you expect to find everything from older machines to the latest machines. In any case, it's a must-visit location for lov- lovers of UFO catchers. But are they actually? do they actually work better than the Western ones? Uh, who knows? Dude... My dad was so good at claw machines. I never figured out how. Uh, he just was. I think it was on his Trash Taste podcast where someone said you have to uh, kind of overshoot it a little bit because the claw, after you're done moving it, will kind of correct itself and scam you mm. out of having a precise uh, catch. So you have to kind of... Uh, and I think... Yeah. Yeah. I think more people were catching on to that, and that's why you see them less here. And instead, you see, um, I don't know if you've seen them where you're at, but you have the one where you press the button and you have to, like, you have to tie yeah, the I've button. Yeah, I've seen them. I've seen them. Uh, yeah, so that's what they had. Well, what they had, because, you know, malls aren't really doing that well right yeah. now. But, but that's what you saw for a couple of years instead of the claw machines. It's like different stuff like that, or put the, or the one where you put the key in the yeah. hole, where, uh, like, where it would, like, you'll be just off by a little bit and it looks like it it would fit in fine but then it doesn't yeah but yeah so claw machines in japan they're a lot better probably i don't know (laughs) okay next next up is still you what oh yeah next story Zoys Wild Infinity Blast launches November 26th in Japan. Second Zoys game for Switch gets a release date. This is by Saramano over at Komatsu. Zoys Wild Infinity Blast will launch for Switch on November 26th in Japan for 5,980 yen, publisher Takara Tomi announced. There's an overview of the game. With, you can modify Zoids, uh, exhilarating mech battles, uh, a gathering of Zoids across the generations. In addition to the Zoids from Zoys Wild, Zoids from previous series, such as Blade Li- Liger and Geno Breaker, will also appear. Only in Zoid Wild's Infinity Blast can you enjoy battle between Zoids from across generations. Okay, that's cool. Good. Like, so a Zoids fighting game with all different types of Zoids. I mean, you're... So that's... that's you're probably good. living your best life now with so many Zoids game coming out. Uh, I just wish there was more modification and it was less of a fighting game and more of like a action adventure game type of thing uh, that's that's uh, the dream for every anime fan who who has a, a game coming out in their front yes yeah okay so i'm gonna do the story mm. real quick and my headset battery is low so you'll take the next story and i just need to get a charger sure. real quick um so uh next is check out the tokyo tokyo game show 2020 online live stream sc- schedule by kite stenbuck over at silicon era CESA has published a live stream schedule for Tokyo Game Show 2020 online, which begins September 24, 2020. A total of 36 streams has been scheduled for four days as the digital event runs until September 27, 2020. These streams will be available to watch at the Tokyo Game Show channel on YouTube. You can also check out the official Tokyo Game Show 2020 live stream schedule below. All times listed here are in Japan Standard Time. Subtract by 8 hours for BST, 13 hours for EDT, and 16 hours for PDT. Oh, so now I know how to do that. <laughs> so day one, I'm not going to go over the times, I'll just go over the which things. 
Uh, we have Xbox Tokyo Game Show Showcase 2020, then Square Enix, and then Lightning Games. That, that's on September 24th. On September 25th, we have Gamera Game, Indie Games from China, Huawei Technologies, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, uh, Renaissance High School Group Esports Course, GeForce Now, powered by SoftBank, Japanese celebrities Aiko Kano and Junichi Kato will perform some live, live gameplay with the cloud platform. Lilith Games, BenQ Japan, DMM Games, new title announcement, Sega slash Atlas TV, existing and upcoming titles this fall, Gung-Ho Online Entertainment, Capcom Special Program, Resident Evil Village, and more. Stream also available in English. Uh, Mouse.TV, uh, eFun, Fujitsu Connected Technologies, presented by Eros Yasai. Uh, can you go over the Day 3 and Day 4 real sure. quick? Let me see. Day 3 and Day 4 are... D3 Publisher, Happynet Games Showcase, Spike Chunsoft, uh, with a Cyberpunk 2077 Night City Wire. That's that's an odd pairing, but okay. Level 5 Special Meeting, uh, which features Megaton Musashi, Yokai Gakuen Y, and Nidokuni Crossworlds. Stream also available in English. Gri Animation Game Show, Psy Games. Um, Konami Info Show. Great, what are they going to show? Koei Tecmo Games, Atelier Raiza 2, and an unannounced new game. Uh, IO Data Device, Tencent Games. Wait. Mm -hmm. The level 5 stream will be available in English? Mm -hmm. Do you think that means... Well, probably for... I'm guessing it's for the Nino Kuni Cross Worlds. But I do wonder if they plan on localizing Megaton Musashi. I don't think they plan on localizing yokai gaku and why because most of the yokai watch spinoffs they have not localized with the exception of busters and also we've had we've heard nothing about the yokai F watch 4 yeah, english it, localization it's, it's, since the initial announcement well you have to consider level 5 is s small ish so, uh, and it's still in a really weird place them, with the release of Snack World and local, everything, and the Inazuma Eleven them thing. Them localizing uh, multiple games at the same time would probably <laughs> cause him to explode, but uh, or implode. Well, so that's why I'm wondering. It says stream also available in English, I mean, and like, why would you advertise we'll, these we'll things? We'll know too? September 26. It's it's a little wait. Yeah, we'll I guess see. So. We'll see. Oh, also, just the the. The reason is Spike Chunsoft and Cyberpunk is they're publishing it in Japan. Uh, maybe a Shonen Jump I'm crossover not sure why, somewhere in the is. game. Well, I mean, it is getting like an anime. Capsule Corp in 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 Cyberpunk. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> Make it happen. Okay. Uh, Ghost yeah. in the Shell. If you really want to be on the nose sure. about it. Uh, <laughs> I know that's not shown it. Day but. four, we have <laughs> Lion Kong with East Eight mobile game, Japan Electronics College, Aqua explanation about esports, uh, AKR, AK Racing, um, Koi Tecmo Games, two new Dynasty Warrior titles, not just one, two. I think there's for for Koi Tecmo. Mm -hmm. It's I think there. Are, there's like a new Dynasty Warrior titles and then two completely new titles no, or no, something? No, no, It's two new Dynasty Are Warrior titles. And uh, the, the Day 3 stream has Atelier Raiza 2 and an unannounced new game. And an unannounced yeah. new game. Yeah. yeah, I knew there were, Koei, I knew Koei Tecmo has something unannounced. Yeah, but two new Dynasty Warrior games? Man. Man, they're just spoiling us. Come on, uh, Dragon Quest Heroes 3 or uh, Final Fantasy Warriors? I can see Final Fantasy oh Warriors. Oh my god, Super Mario. Or maybe... Mushroom like Warriors? This. Mushroom Warriors. <laughs> no, Fairy Tail would be too too on the nose with One Piece Pirate Warriors uh, right there. Like, maybe... I mean, that's probably why they did the RPG. Maybe a Marvel Dynasty Warriors game? Well, wouldn't that just be Ultimate Alliance? Eh, eh. Anyway, uh, next up we also have Konami Momotaro Den Tetsu uh, Showa Heisei Reiwa Mo Teibat, whatever that means. Uh, we also have Bandai Namco with a Sword mm -hmm. Art Online and Scarlet Nexus showcase. We also have yeah. K Lab Games with Bleach Brave Souls Bleach and Mihoi. Do you plan on playing uh, that? You mean for Steam? 
since it'll be on I'll PC check. or Steam or now that you yeah. have a new phone. I mean, it, it, it ran perfectly fine on my old phone, but it was a nice distraction for an afternoon, oh. but not really something I, I planned. Oh, okay. I didn't know you played it at all. No, I played it. I played it. <laughs> uh, you also have okay. MiHoYo with Genshin Impact, which is looking absolutely fantastic. Um, and you also have PUBG Japan Esports Conference. The Tokyo Game Show 2020 online will take place from September 23rd, 2020 to September 27th, 2020. The first day is reserved for business matching. So it's really just day two, three, and four that are worth looking at. But I digress. Mm-hmm. Look, for, look forward to our coverage of that. I might do some actual like news coverage since it'll be throughout the week, and then we'll talk about it on the podcast. But I might do some actual like news coverage videos and writings and nice. stuff for Tokyo Game Show nice. stuff this year. All, um, all right. Depends on a couple of things. Okay. Next. But that's not all. There's some, there's more event stuff around that yeah. same time. Take it we away. We have Game Live Japan 2020 will reveal more games on September 25th to 27th. This is by Kite Stenbuck, which is probably the coolest name I've ever seen. Props to Kite Stenbuck from Silicon Era. Uh, Kadogawa Game Linkage has announced that it will hold Game Live Japan 2020, a live streaming program that will deliver more new game information. It will run for three days from September 25th to September 27th, 2020. The Japanese press release noted that a lot of game makers will participate in Game Live Japan live stream to deliver scoops on new games as well as announcing new information on anticipated titles. Okay, um, you can check the excuse me article for um, the schedule and when you're able to start streaming the event. Uh, it being Kadokawa, I'm guessing you'll see a lot of games based on light novels and manga. So uh, keep your eyes out. Uh, next up, we have Nintendo eShop sales. Oh, sh- or eShop sale games now show when deals expire. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. There's a new Nintendo eShop sale games feature in effect. People browsing the storefront will now have an easier time going through its sales. That's because each listing for a game now also shows how long it will be on sale. This feature is now live in the North American, European, and Japanese eShops. Um, Good. Good. It's, it's a great thing. Um, you can click on the article for an example of how it'll uh, show in the eShop. But my thing is, it kind of already existed, but you'd have to like uh, go deeper in the menu and uh, go into the game's yeah. sub-menu to see until when the sale will mm-hmm. be active. So it, they're just yeah. making it a bit easier, but it was already there if you knew where to look. Okay. Next up, we have CyberConnect2 CEO called Hack GU Last Record Switch Port Appealing. This is by Jenny Lada for Silicon Era. When Dot Hack GU Last Record came to the PlayStation 4 and PC, it did something entirely new for the series. That is, it showed up outside the PlayStation ecosystem. A recent CyberConnect2 question from a fan asked about a potential Dot Hack GU Last Record Switch Port even if it was digital only. The developer's CEO, Hiroshi Matsuyama, fielded the question. Even though he called the idea appealing and said that the team would love to do that, Bandai Namco said that the company would not be able to make it happen. Why am I even reading this then? (laughs) Anyway, the possibility of a port was the whole focus of the company's latest Q&A video. Matsuyama confirmed that CyberConnect2 Cyber 2 had thought about possi- a possible uh, port for the Switch, and he said that the idea of releasing the last recon on the Nintendo Switch is obviously appealing. Okay, if you click on the article, you'll see more tidbits from that interview and the YouTube link to said interview. Uh, I mean, this is kind of a bait and switch. Not clickbaity, but a bait and switch. Like... It's appealing, but then Bandai Namco like feel it or, or counter that with no, it's not gonna happen. Don't don't even think about it. it's not gonna happen. Uh, yeah, it, it's, I, I don't know why you would title it that when you. Uh, it's probably my bad. it's probably because uh, Dot Hack is maybe 
low in the mindshare department these days. Like I don't, I don't really see people talking about it besides diehard fans or people nostalgic for the good old days of, uh, or people like me who ha- got the game a while ago and still haven't played it yet. Well, maybe that's why for PS4. Maybe that's why. <laughs> hey, there's a demo. There's a demo on PS4. I, play, I you played can play it. it. You and can try it. It's decent. Audience. I'm, I. It's a little yeah, dated. Yeah, I, I might have still. to play the whole game. Um. There's a great review on YouTube by JRPG Jungle, if you want to check that out, um, which covers uh, what you might find in the game. Uh, fun fact, the anime uh, connected to this game, Dot Hack Roots, is the best way to fall asleep quickly. So if you have insomnia or just want to test your limits of, uh, of your attention span, watch that anime. If, if you couldn't see past what? that sarcasm, that means it was really boring. Well, it's better than Sword Art Online. No, no, that's a low no, bar. no, 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 no. I will not stand for it. Well, the first... Well, cause you're talking about the first Dot no, Hack, right? No, anime uh, from uh, Dot Hack Roots. Yeah, you're talking about... You're ta- oh, Roots. Yes. I thought Roots was supposed to be have more action in it. No, no, no. Sign no, no, no. was the one that I was watching, and it was like mostly talking, but it was like a lot of philosophical no. stuff. And I'm like, this is actually kind of interesting. No, it's, it's not even that interesting. Roots is just <laughs> plain boring. It's, it's. Don't waste your time. Well, just that, that's why you play the game. Just instead. play the game. Don't bother with the anime. Just, just play the game. Like, if, if you have trouble sleeping, then watch that's the anime. Opinion. Otherwise, don't bother. <laughs> okay, next up we have PS Vita continues to reign as the best selling used video game hardware on eBay Japan. This is by Sato for Silicon Era. Uh, while Sony ended production of the PS Vita last year, the handheld device continues to thrive in the used game and hardware market in Japan. This week's issue of Famitsu Magazine, magazine has a special feature with eBay Japan. Uh, below are the top 5 used video game hardware and peripherals sold on eBay Japan from April to June 2020. And uh, it lists as number 1 PS Vita, number 2 PSP, number 3 Nintendo DS Lite, number 4 GameCube controller, and number 5 Nintendo 64. Um, you can check the article for some other fun tidbits. But if I had to wager a guess on why it's so popular... One, it just looks really pretty, and it it's a fun handheld, and it played the games well. Um, it might be underpowered to today's standards, uh, and it is probably a good place where you might find games of a certain persuasion. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. If you know, you know. Um, so that's why it's, it's maybe popular now. Uh, next up. I mean, maybe. You have World's End Club launches September 4th for Apple Arcade in spring 2020 for Switch. This is from the creators of Zero 2021. Escape. Or 2021. You said, you said 2028 is really far away. Yeah, spring 2020. <laughs> oh, whoops. <laughs> they forgot. 2020, 2021. <laughs> okay. This is uh, from the creators of Zero Escape and Danganronpa. This is by Sal Romano from Gamatsu. World's End Club will launch for Apple Arcade on September 4th followed by Switch in spring 2021. Publisher Izanagi Games and developer 2Kyo Games announced. You can click on an article for an overview of the game and a trailer. Um, and uh, that's super great for fans of Danganronpa and the Zero Escape games, which uh, Errol and I are pretty big yeah, fans I'm of. Yeah, I'm excited. So, uh, it's unfortunate if, if that it's fan, on Apple Arcade first. Well, it's also coming to Switch, so... Yeah, but not until next year. I mean, it's still coming. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You ha- you still have a backlog, so don't worry too much. That's yeah. true. Including Danganronpa. <laughs> <laughs> well, three. Yeah. Okay, so now main topic. Main topic is Nintendo this morning was like, Hey, remember that Mario stuff that was rumored? Here's all the Mario well, stuff we're doing. Yeah. yeah, it's not. It, also, it is what you think, and it's also not what you think. It, it was also kind of like them them going, "Okay, we're, we're sick of you complaining. Here, 
have 15 minutes of a direct. Here's your direct. All games you, you, you probably want and some we haven't mentioned, but here it is. Stop asking us for stuff. But also there's some weird stuff about yeah. it. Um, so the first story, Animal Crossing New Horizons to add Super Mario themed furniture in March 2021. Animal, this is Sal Romano over at Gamatsu. I think these stories are all Gamatsu. Mm -hmm. Animal Crossing New Horizons will add Super Mario themed furniture in March 2021. Uh, that was it. <laughs> yeah. I liked having a new leaf. I liked having the, the Mario furniture. Um, Super Mario 3D All Stars announced for Switch. Uh, due out soon. September 18th. That's two weeks. Uh, Nintendo has announced Super Mario 3D All-Stars, a collection including Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy for Switch. It will launch on September 18th for $59.99 as a limited run retail edition and a digital edition available for a limited time until the end of March 2021. Um, they're up res but they're not like HD or remakes or anything. Um... So, so, so they're put into, and I believe you have to, depending on what mode, mm -hmm. you can play Galaxy in handheld mode, but you have to use the Switch's touchscreen. Yeah, remember when the, that the Switch has a touchscreen? Mm -hmm. um, but in TV mode and in, and in, in, in the other modes, you have to use the Joy-Cons essentially as Wiimotes ha for has Galaxy. Has that been confirmed? Like I, I, I saw. Yes, it was confirmed by it was confirmed by Polygon. Yeah, because there was today. some confusion about that. Yeah, and um, the confusion was people thought you couldn't play it in handheld mode mm -hmm. at all. No, you can. And if it's just any so other mode, that means if you have a Switch Lite, you can still play it in handheld. You don't have to buy separate Joy yes. Cons just to play this game. Yeah, because that mm -hmm. would that would have yeah. sucked. Yeah. So, like, there's a lot of stuff about this game. Like, people are like, oh, well, it's not up res, and it's a weird limited mm -hmm. release. And everybody... M a lot of people were saying, well, the other anniversary games were limited release, too. Um, um, and I'm like, yeah, that's true. Um, the thing is, uh, today's Kind of Funny Games Daily has a great conversation. Yeah, I watched that, a too. A great back and forth between Greg and Tim about all of this. Um, I... I tend to lean more towards Greg. Um, but... Yeah, it, it, it kind of sucks that it, it'll only be available for a limited time. Uh, I already pre-ordered yeah. it. <laughs> I, I, I might just <laughs> pre-order the digital version and let someone else uh, oh, I get physical. their hands on the, the, the physical version because both the, the digital and the... Uh, physical edition of Mario 3D All-Stars will be limited until March uh, 2021. Yeah. So, don't sleep. Yeah, I don't know about the, what the digital thing is with that. Um, it's... Nobody is sure. Uh, maybe they'll sell them separately, who know, or maybe this it, or that. Um, Greg said that it's, pr Disney it's probably because uh, next gen is on the horizon. Um, new games are incoming for that generation. And they want to keep as much mind shared to themselves uh, uh, with, with people maybe going, okay, I only have money for one game. Will I buy the new Avengers or uh, Miles Morales or Call of Duty uh, with my brand spanking new PlayStation 5? Or will I get this uh, super limited Super Mario game that that's that looks super cool mm -hmm. and it's, it's making me feel nostalgic? nostalgic. Or it's it's a great uh, look back at the history of, of 3D platformers. Yeah. Like, if, if you're faced with that choice, which one do you take? Like, uh, yeah. Super Mario is something that's fun for everyone. Um, mm -hmm. Or at least fun for most people. And if a parent is yeah. faced with that dilemma, uh, a parent that maybe played video games in the past and now has have uh, kids of their own, um, they might swing for Nintendo and, and Mario and not buy uh, the new Call of Duty for little Timmy this Christmas. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I like how, <laughs> how I keep bringing up little Timmy. Uh, or Grandma might go like, okay, what, what can I buy little Timmy? What looks decent then? Oh, no, this is too violent. No, Spider-Man looks too too scary. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with this, oh, with this lovely, chubby Italian plumber. Mustache yeah, man. Mustache man. Um, 
What do you think about the omission of Galaxy 2? Okay, so this is a pretty dumb reason, and I've seen, I've seen no one talk about it. Uh, the game is called, or the collection is called 3D All-Stars. I think Nintendo uh-huh. was trying to be cute and said, Oh, 3D, let's just put only three games in it. That makes sense. Uh. <laughs> uh, it could also be that uh, Galaxy 2 is a great game in its own right. And they might be looking at it like, hmm, you know what? We might make this its own dedicated remaster or release because there are so mm. many good ideas in this that we want to dedicate more time and resources mm. to making it now it its own full product. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Now, in line with that, do you think that the reason certain Zelda games haven't been ported to Switch yet is because they're thinking of doing the same thing? Um. For like, for like as this collection, like, like let's say. Let's say because we know there there are the rumors about Skyward yeah. Sword, right? But let's say they did like a a collection that was Twilight Princess, Wind Waker, and I don't know what the third one would be. Well, they could make like the GameCube collection: that's Twilight Princess and Wind Waker. Or the, um, they and then they could put or like Ocarina and Majora's yeah, Mask. Yeah, they, they could also and, ha- and just make it four. It doesn't have to be three. Yeah, you they know. could also do that or have a collection of the the two D. And that would be Game the Boy reason Color why and Game Boy Advance games. they haven't done it yet. They yeah. haven't been ported yet. It's because they're trying to put them all together. It could be. Um, and COVID has thrown a wrench in everyone's plans. And n- n- yeah. no gaming company has suffered more than Nintendo, I think. So maybe uh-huh. Galaxy 2 was planned for this collection. And they just couldn't get it ready uh-huh. in time for the release this September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, And they said, like, okay, you know what? It's not up to quality. It's not up to our standards. We're not going to do that. Um, There are so many reasons. Mm -hmm. We could just keep speculating endlessly about why it wasn't um, added. But I'd I'd like to to stick with my dumb, super dumb reason of saying, you know, 3D. It's cute. Uh We're not going to stray from that. We think it's fun. (laughs) It's it's not not that deep, fam. So out of these games, I've tried Super Mario 64 back when on the Wii Virtual mm-hmm. Console. Did not like mm-hmm. it, but I'm willing to give it another shot. Ooh. I've I don't think I've ever played Sunshine or Galaxy. Oh my god! Like I'm I'm old enough. So that's why I said okay, I'll give this a chance. I'm old enough to have played uh, Super Mario 64 on a 64. Um, Sunshine. Well, I mean, so am I. Yeah, and I'm a couple years yeah. younger than you. Sun- <laughs> I just had a PlayStation. Yeah. Uh, Sunshine I had on the GameCube and I enjoyed quite a bit but back then I wasn't really that adept at uh, platformers Mm -hmm. so my little brother played that much more than I did Um, and Galaxy (laughs) is my favorite game ever Um, yeah because I think the, the creativity that they displayed the amount of fun and just just this general feeling of 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 joy that the game exudes is unmatched not even Mm. by by odyssey um and i think having another chance to play that is is just a wonderful uh, gift that nintendo has given us and maybe they didn't add galaxy 2 because they wanted to have people focus on Galaxy 1 and its own strength uh, because I've seen a lot of mention in the past about people saying oh Galaxy 2 is much better than Galaxy 1 I don't know why you'd, pl- why you'd play Galaxy 1 if you have to play one game just play Galaxy 2 because Galaxy 2 has Yoshi uh, maybe Nintendo saw that and they said you know what let's let's just keep the focus on, on Galaxy 1 <laughs> and uh, if, if they had their fill we'll just add Galaxy 2 later as DLC. It reminds me of how... It kind of reminds me of how... And this is completely not a Nintendo thing. Mm-hmm. But in the Lego Incredibles game... Yeah. You have to play through Incredibles 2 before you can play Incredibles 1. Wait, how does that make sense? It doesn't. Oh, okay. But they just know, knew nobody wanted to play Incredibles 2. Oh. Because that movie is oh, they, not as they good were as like, the first one. Okay, uh, <laughs> you're done with this. Now here's your prequel. 
Uh, yeah, it's like you. It's more like they force you to play through the second yeah. one <laughs> to get to the first one. Yeah, it's weird. Um, but yeah, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah. Uh, I forgot. I was gonna say something else, but I forgot. Oh yeah, Odyssey. Odyssey. I loved Odyssey. So it. So I guess I, it may, may help make me more open to trying these games. Yeah. Out. Um. I've al- I've also um, seen uh Tim from Kind of Funny say, okay, but why not add Super or was it Imran? I think it was Imran who said, "Why not add um, Super Mario 3D World to this collection? Because it's also 3D, and 3D World and these three games and Galaxy 2 because by extension thing. are different um, uh, different expressions of what Mario is. Because isn't 3D World closer to a 2D Mario game? It, yeah, that's ex- in ex- 3D exactly." Yeah. The, the the way it's the the levels are designed and the way they approach uh, the the gameplay is much closer to two D Mario than three D Mario. If, yeah, if three D Mario because I played a bit of a three D land uh-huh. and not it's, world it's, and yeah, yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah, if if two D is is old school Super Mario Brothers um, and three D is Super Mario Odyssey. Mario 3D World mm-hmm. is closer to old school Super Mario Brothers. So I, I think that's. Uh, did you see on this? You know how. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Go ahead. So you know how on the sizzle reel at the end, mm-hmm. they so they didn't include Galaxy Two. Um, but something I noticed that that I thought mm-hmm. was weird is they included Super Mario Land mm-hmm. One. But they did not include Super Mario Land 2. Um, I think it has to do with how unique are the expressions of these games uh, with their representation of Mario. Because Galaxy 1 and Galaxy 2 um, stylistically are pretty much the same. So why show Galaxy 2? And I think it's the same uh, predicament with uh, Mario Land uh, one and two are Mario Land Two is way different than Mario Land One. Sure, but the expression might be similar enough where Nintendo went. Uh, we have limited time, and I don't think it really fits, so we'll just exclude it for this time. But at, at that point, they should have also ex- excluded Land. Like it's just weird. Um, to me. It just comes off I as really strange to me because it's also a milestone in their history of being able to create a 3D 3D Mario game on a handheld that it, it it was to them worth mentioning that that's what i'm thinking maybe it'll be a uh, for the wario anniversary since that's the first appearance of wario <laughs> maybe maybe but yeah if if my only takeaway is that i do think that limiting the release uh, this collection and Mar- Super Mario Bros. 35 t- until uh, March of next year kind of sucks for people who aren't able to buy it anytime soon because maybe with the pandemic you have other expenses and uh, maybe you have other games you want to get to first um, over Mario and when the time's right, you're not able to buy it. Kind of sucks for them. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking it'll come back eventually. This is just them trying to to get more eyes on them instead of PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Um, and yeah, we'll see uh, if, if they change their minds. But uh, yeah, that's where I'm yeah. at. The one thing I like about Galaxy, even though I haven't played it, is the soundtrack. I've heard it mm-hmm. enough times, and I'm like, okay, I this music is so good. I really it makes me want to play this game. Oh man, it's, um, the game is so good, so so good. Um, next next Mario thing is a uh, SNES Nintendo Switch Online adds Super Mario All Stars, Super Mario Brothers One Two or One Yeah One The Lost Levels Two and Three. The Super Nintendo Entertainment System Nintendo Switch Online app has added Super Mario All-Stars, Nintendo announced. Uh, so they added that today, and if you have an online subscription, you can play it. I plan on doing mm-hmm. that later, because I love Super Mario 2, because it's yeah. weird. 
and I like I prefer the weird Mario games. That's why I was talking about Land so much mm-hmm. earlier. Uh, <laughs> so uh, go play that. Oh, uh, and then we have Mario. Co- real oh, quick, what? I've seen also some mention of oh when they did the first Super Mario All Stars, they redid the graphics. So why did they not redo the graphics more significantly for the 3D All Stars release? Because Mario 64 work. is not in the 16 by 9 aspect ratio. And the textures yeah. aren't really retouched all that much for what you'd consi- there, consider yeah. a real there's, remake there's a or remaster. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it's because of Nintendo's philosophy with regards to remasters these days. Uh, when you look back at Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask for 3DS, Nintendo mentioned, or Grezzo mentioned, that when they envision this game for a new hardware platform, they want it to feel like the game you played in the past. So they did, don't, they don't want to mm-hmm. change all that much visually that it would look like another game entirely. So they just want mm-hmm. want to hew closer to the nostalgic feel of Nintendo's uh, past and not muddy that vision too much. Yeah. Um, Next Mario thing is uh, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit announced for Switch. Nintendo has announced Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, a new Mario Kart game that brings the fun of the series to the real world by using Switch to race against opponents with a physical kart. It's basically, uh, it will launch for Switch on October 16th in Mario set or Luigi set for $99.99. Oh my god. Basically, it's an AR Mario Kart game, and you have a remote control car, and you make the tracks like on your floor mm-hmm. with different markers. Yeah. Uh, and then you on the screen, you you actually see like because there's a ca- the car has a little camera on yeah. it. So so like it puts all the like question boxes and all that. So that's the neat thing. Yeah. Um, Created a partnership this, with Velen this, Studios. This might not be for. The, the person looking forward to Nintendo's big first party game not 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 if you're looking forward to Breath of the Wild 2 or and, and for people who live in small yeah, apartments not for people who live in small apartments because you, you probably <laughs> watched this trailer and went what the hell what is this what is this kid's toy and you have to imagine or remember Nintendo is still a toy company they primarily make dude if I was a kid I'd be so high. I would totally ask for this for yeah, Christmas. Yeah, and they're not thinking about uh, little Timmy that grew up and is now big old Timmy of, of 30 years old. Uh, who, well, that's what the collection yeah, is that's, for. Yeah, that's what the collection is for. <laughs> this is for the little Timmy of the now. The little Timmy that has uh, an endless amount of imagination and that envisions the, the next generation of video games and toys. Um it's 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 totally Nintendo's blue ocean strategy where they they're not focusing on on the hardcore or the the dedicated fans they want the newer fans they want to reach even more people with this product yeah um next news story Super Mario Brothers 35 announced free for Nintendo Switch online members from October 1st to March 31st which that's also really weird Nintendo has announced Super Mario Bros. 35, a 35-player online battle in a world, in the world of the original Super Mario Bros. game for Switch. It will launch on October 1st as a digital-only game exclusive to Nintendo Switch Online members, and will be playable until March 31st, 2021. It's basically like Tetris, mm, Tetris mm-hmm. 99, but it's Mario. Yeah, essentially, yeah. it looks super cool. Um, also limited with that uh, limited release uh, strategy by Nintendo. That was weird. It yeah. is weird. That was the weirdest thing to me. It's a digital only game um, f- <laughs> specifically made for online play and Nintendo's online mm-hmm. offering is kind of lackluster to say the least. Um, yeah. And then to take this away it's 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 strange but it's also the most nintendo it's nintendo so move ever <laughs> um also it's the it's the mario because remember how mario uh what was it mario royale or yeah uh whatever that uh 
whatever that Mario fan game was called that Nintendo took down. This was why. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's... Like I said with uh, the, the 3D collection, it's probably them saying, okay, you have only a limited amount of time to focus on games. We need as much time focused on us. And the fiscal year also ends for them in March. Um, and like Greg said on the Kind of Funny Games Daily, they probably want to jack up their, their prices or, or their, their earnings as much as possible for that window. So as to say, you know what? We had a killer year. Animal Crossing, the Switch being the, the, the best-selling hardware uh, of the year, and Mario uh, dominating the sales charts. I mean, what else could we ask for? Don't forget about Xenoblade. Yeah, Doing pretty Xenoblade well. There's Xenoblade, and there's probably a Pokemon <laughs> game waiting to be announced for the end of this Snap. year. We just still don't know when Snap is coming out. Yeah, you have Snap and the second piece of the Sh- Sword and Shield DLC. Uh, yeah, that's and true. Probably another announcement headed for November because they're, that spot in their calendar is still open. So it's anybody's guess what they're going to drop there. Um, Yeah. So next Mario thing, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury announced for Switch. So this is just a this is a port of the Wii U game, the critically acclaimed Wii U game. Um, I've never played that one, so I'm glad to give it a chance. Bowser's Fury, we don't really know anything about. It's just either extra levels or an extra mode or yeah. something. Um, it was just a little teaser at the end. That comes out February 12th, 2021 for $59.99. Um, that will probably not be a limited release. No, it's not a re- limited release. Um, no. But yeah, that that does make you question. Okay, this is something that that'll be around for probably forever. So why not the others? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I still haven't played New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe. I still need yeah. to play that at some point. Um. But yeah, so 3D World, who I always hear, I always hear people saying, "Oh, 3D World was so good, it's so good," and I'm like, "It's a Mario game. Aren't Mario games always good?" And like, no, you don't understand. Uh, not all of them, probably. Most, I'd say, maybe 90 percent of the Mario games are good. That's still a better batting average than most, but uh, yeah. Yeah. Like the majority of yeah. Them. I mean, obviously the spinoffs, like you know, Mario. What was it? Hotel Mario and Mario was missing and stuff like. Okay, of course those aren't that great, but yeah, <laughs> you know. Um, last Mario thing is the Game and Watch. Well, there were some clothes announced, some nice shoes and and like a dress and some T-shirts that you can get on the Nintendo. The store. shoes are dope. Um, They're my favorite colors: yeah, red, was- white, and blue. Um, are you gonna? Yeah, ah, uh, maybe. I mean, I already have two decent <laughs> pairs of shoes that that I'm perfectly fine. You're in lockdown. You won't be walking anymore. Yeah, I, I don't need them. I don't need them. I want them, but I don't need them. <laughs> but, of course, since you're not walking anywhere, you can take better care of them. And yeah. so you don't have to worry about them getting dirty. So you can have a nice display. Piece. That's true. Um, okay, anyways. Game & Watch Super Mario, Bros- Super Mario Brothers announced. Collectible device due out November 13th. Nintendo will release Game & Watch Super Mario Bros., a new collectible device inspired by the original Game & Watch system, first released in 1980, on November 13th for $49.99, the company announced. Here's an overview of the device. Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. features a modern con- a D-pad, or control pad. In addition to playing classic games Super Mario Bros., Super Mario Bros. Lost Levels, and a special version of Ball with a Mario makeover, Game & Watch Super Mario Bros. also functions as a clock with 35 little touches to discover, including some guest appearances from Mario's friends and foes. Oh, I didn't know this was actually like, they actually put uh, Super Mario Brothers in here. I thought it was like a, you know, the Tiger Electronic type stuff mm-hmm. that they used to have yeah, in the Yeah, it, it's in that... I thought it was I mean, that Tiger, kind of thing. It's in that Tiger vein, Elect- but it's better Tiger than Electronic that. probably got their idea from Nintendo's Game & Watch. And Nintendo's like, you know yeah. what? Mm-hmm. Hold my beer. We'll show you how to really <laughs> do this. Um, and yeah, yeah, it's it's a pretty neat trinket. You don't need it um, if you have Nintendo. 
if you're like a collector and a huge Mario yeah, fan, if, yeah, if you, you have probably Nintendo, want this. Nintendo uh, Switch Online, you probably have this in the NES collection or the SNES collection. So you don't need it, but it's is nice enough and fun enough that you it's might want it. It's a collector's item. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And that was the last story. Um, we do have one listener question from my friend, uh, <laughs> my friend O'Shea, who mm-hmm. uh, this question has nothing to do with anything we've talked about. Yeah, he says, <laughs> "Will Spider-Man be exclusive? Will be will be PlayStation exclusive to the next Marvel vs. Capcom? And when's the next time Marvel will take us for a ride?" Uh, will <laughs> Spider-Man be exclusive? All. I appreciate the number, the MVC yeah, reference. Yeah, all, all signs point to yes, because all signs point to yes because <laughs> Sony has uh, like the movie rights to Spider Man, and they're probably mm-hmm. leveraging that uh, to to also include game rights, um, and yeah, it's it's upsetting, but that's probably what's going to happen. It Marvel's all over the place when it comes to video games because then there's like Ultimate Alliance 3 which is weirdly Switch exclusive for some reason. Mm. Uh, well, it's it's, it's probably like, because they l- uh, looked at the at the marketplace and they were like who wants a Diablo clone? <laughs> and PlayStation and Xbox were like uh, no, n- we don't. And then I was like sign me up, coach. Put me in. They should have said with Marvel characters. Yeah. Like, uh, the only reason I haven't played Ultimate Alliance 3 is because it's on... Like, I don't want to play it on Switch. I previewed it at E3 and didn't really like it. I previewed it at E3 and didn't really like it. And so, I'm like, well, I wonder if I would like this better if it was on PC and I could actually play with my friends who play on there. Because I don't have a lot of friends that play on... Well, I do, but I don't Uh have friends who would play that kind of game with me on Switch. I mean, you could ask Um, them. Maybe they'd be into it. That's true. And... I don't think, yeah, I don't think they would. But um, uh huh. I just think the the switch ex- again, the switch exclusivity is just just weird to me. And like Marvel with gaming and how like there's this one thing here and this other thing here and this Avengers yeah. thing here and it's like all I over mean, the place. Ex- exclusivity means uh, the person that pays the most gets gets to say what happens or what doesn't happen. Mm. And uh, yeah. Marvel Ultimate Alliance three being a switch exclusive means nintendo bankrolled that game more or less well hopefully back onto the actual topic hopefully we get uh i hope we get a marvel vs. capcom re-release of the order one someday uh... <laughs> we got the three re-release but two i need a re-release of two man um I need it, it might happen um might take a while what I'm, still, what I'm, I'm sure, thinking but. is they're waiting on the release of the next X-Men installment in the MCU or the first X-Men installment in the MCU that might not be for a really long yeah, time so it, it'll be a ways off because everyone and their mother and their grandmother complained that the X-Men weren't part of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite but we just got a new X-Men installment uh, New Mutant this doesn't really count because that <laughs> there you go there's your excuse to release Marvel vs. No, Ca- re-release no, no. Marvel vs. X- Capcom X-Men 2 proper. there's your Wolverine, excuse do it Wolverine Cyclops uh, the Professor X whatever it's in the same universe yeah it still counts no I'm, I'm, I'm not counting that um, <laughs> they probably you put throw the runaways they, they, in they there they probably are waiting on that <laughs> and have a whole marketing campaign mm. of oh there's a new X-Men game coming out. I don't out. know about that. Oh, we have uh, a new X-Men movie coming out. Oh, we have X-Men DLC for the Avengers game. So, it's probably all riding on that. I don't think the Avengers game is going to last that long. Uh, the Avengers game will have a sequel by that point. Um, I think people have learned... Their, With how long it's going to take. I think people have learned enough lessons from the, the games as service uh, genre to not bring out sequels because sequels are a diminishing return and you only have so much mind share for online only games or online plus games hmm. uh, 
like you, we've saw we we we've, we've seen a lot of people move away from Destiny Two because it's more or less Destiny One, just prettier. We've seen mm-hmm. people drop uh, yeah. the Division Two because it's the Division One but prettier. We've seen um, yeah. multiple multiple stories like that, and I think people are wary now of games as service and you only have so much money so much free yeah, time to sure. devote to a game that you want mm-hmm. to have as a service and there's also still Fortnite Fortnite yeah. has Marvel content why would you play somewhere else if you have Fortnite that's free and has Marvel content so it because maybe you don't want to play Fortnite I mean <laughs> maybe you don't but millions of people still do and <laughs> millions of kids still do for some reason and wherever the dollar is whichever game is successful in their eyes that's where they want to invest their content so uh it's a tricky yeah. it's a tricky situation yeah um i think we're gonna wrap it up there yeah. uh because we're kind of over time uh if you have questions uh send them into why am I Jeff Goldblooming? Uh, uh, uh. If you have uh, uh, questions, uh, tweet uh, at <laughs> us. Send them to tweet at us at, at at us specifically. I'm at Errol M. He's at Shin Megane Kun. They're in the description. Yeah. Or you could at the uh, podcast Twitter, which is just at In From Japan. We uh, I actually revamped it recently. We have a new little logo mm-hmm. and a different background. It looks a lot better. Uh, you might also notice in the thumbnail. Um, but yeah, so uh, stay safe, wear a mask, wash your hands, uh, play games. Uh, don't listen to Jason about dot .hack. <laughs> listen <laughs> at your own peril. Go watch at your own peril. <laughs> okay, bye. bye. I'm Matinee. Matinee. <laughs>